The Gospel reading is taken from the Gospel of Mark, the 11th chapter. Listen to and for the Word of God as it comes to us from Mark chapter 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say, this. The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door, outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. That they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around and everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the word of the Lord. Justice is grounded ultimately in inherent rights. Justice is grounded ultimately in inherent rights. It was 22 years ago today. that the Reverend Dr. Nico Smith preached in the pulpit at Walker Center Presbyterian Church where I was senior pastor. In the spring of 1985, Nico Smith shocked many people when as a white man with an impeccable Afrikaner pedigree, a prestigious university job and good standing as a minister in the Dutch Reformed Church, a comfortable home, moved with his wife Ellen to the deprived and despised South African township of Memelodi. At the height of his career, Nico needed to reconcile the policies of apartheid with the gospel's command to love your neighbor as, his, as yourself. You see, he had been taught to regard black people as an inferior race. Having known Nico and Ellen, having visited South Africa before apartheid came down, Nico understood fully how justice was rooted, grounded ultimately in inherent rights. For him to walk away from his university position his standing in the Dutch Reformed Church, to walk away from his possessions, and he and Ellen to move into that township, 
shocked everyone. You can only imagine. To go against the governmental policies that have categories of so-called colored, so-called black, so-called white people, to stand up in the name of Jesus because God's commandment to love God and love others, and he said this system has taught me to hate people different than myself. And he moved into the township. That was the most memorable Palm Sunday from my perspective. As I sat in the congregation I served as the senior pastor and listened to Nico preach, for Nico Smith proclaimed that day, I'll never forget these words. And he turned to me and he said, Steve, the sign of a healthy church is that you will so preach the radical call of the gospel that you'll empty this church. Because people will not want to listen to the radical call of this God to love the people that we, even in the United States of America, have been conditioned to shun, to not engage. I sat in my chair and I said, oh my goodness, I've been here three months. And he put the challenge out there to preach the gospel so radically that some people would stop coming to church. He called the congregation at Walker Center Presbyterian Church to a radical inclusivity. My heart sank. I knew what he was saying. Would I, could we as a congregation be about justice and the radical inclusion that the gospel of Jesus Christ calls for? Paul Sunday, Jesus was five days away from his death. He felt it and wrestled with his fate. Jesus knew the Father's will. He was sent to love people, heal people, teach people, dine with people, confront people, befriend people, include people, and die for people. He was obedient to the will of his Father, the way of God, an inclusive way of welcoming and being hospitable. It was a way of being just. And so when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the crowd hailed, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. And the word Hosanna in Hebrew is coming straight from Psalm 118. Hosanna means, O oh Lord, grant salvation. You see, Jerusalem is not just any city. It's the city of God and a faithless city, the city of hope and a city of oppression, the city of joy, and the city of pain. The crowd received Jesus unto him themselves, but they were not ready for what Jesus was about to do, for he was beginning to address all of their misunderstandings of what the king would be. And by that simple march into Jerusalem, riding on that donkey, dragging his feet in the dirt, not coming with pomp and wealth, but a poorness of spirit identifying with the very people that the religious leaders of his day were shunning. The religious people of his day not welcoming Jesus began. And he loved and he included, and he brought in all the people that the temple, which was empty that evening when he went in, it was empty for a reason. It wasn't a normal time of worship, so we can accept that. But the witness 
and mission of the temple was absent in the community. The very people that God was attempting to reach through the temple were the people that were shunned and pushed to the margins. Just this past week, Governor Pence in Indiana signed into legislation ability for business owners not to serve people based on the owner's religious convictions. In this same week, we learn that the racist chant that this Sigma Alpha Epsilon fraternity brother chanted at the University of Oklahoma was taught at a Sigma Alpha Epsilon leadership conference. I shake my head. And I recall Nico Smith's words and his actions of saying the Jesus I love and the Jesus I preach does not separate people. That there is inherent equality and dignity that is an inherent right of all human beings. Oh, you weren't expecting this message on Palm Sunday. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that message either from Nico Smith. But you see, the Jesus we have gathered to worship with the waving palm branches was not the Jesus that the religious leaders wanted, or even the people wanted, because they wanted a king to come in and do further human rights violations and to overthrow, to arrest the oppressor, put them in prison. Are you with me? There's nothing about the gospel we believe in or the Jesus we follow, the one who is on the colt, dragging his feet. That's not much of an entrance for a king. But this is the Jesus we begin to follow this Palm Sunday to that Last Supper, to that cross who loved, who suffered because he knew that his Father, with whom he was one, and the Spirit who was at work confirming this mission, had created all people to be loved and to come to terms with who Jesus said and called them to be. Jesus turned upside down the people's expectations of human rights, justice, and a king. The religious leaders in Judaism, as a movement, did not understand Jesus' message. It was too radical, too in your face, if you will. Philip Yancey writes, As I studied the life of Christ, one impression about Jesus struck me more forcibly than any other. We have tamed him. The Jesus I learned about as a child was a sweet and inoffensive, the kind of person whose lap you'd want to climb on. Mr. Rogers with a beard. <laughs> Indeed, Jesus did have qualities of gentleness and compassion that attracted little children. Mr. Rogers, however, he assuredly was not. Not even the Romans would have crucified Mr. Rogers. <laughs> Think about that. Like you, these past months, I've been following the efforts 
to address racism and advance marriage equality in our country. Justice liberates others from their oppression. Jesus liberated those who suffered injustice by the hands of the enforcers of justice. Desmond Tutu writes, if you are neutral in a situation of injustice, you have chosen the side of the oppressor. If an elephant has his foot on the tail of the mouse, and you say you are neutral, the mouse will not appreciate your neutrality. <laughs> Jesus spoke directly to the elephant in the room. The Jewish religious leaders and their lack of being on God's mission and he said, lift up your foot. <clears throat> well, they didn't. And Jesus kept loving, embracing. Jesus lifted the elephant's foot when he reframed the Last Supper on Monday, Thursday. And when he suffered that cross. The elephant's foot was lifted. I yearn for Geneva Presbyterian Church to become known as a church which preaches, teaches, and lives an inclusive theology which embraces all people, regardless of race, gender, sexual orientation, or class. Let us be a place that presents in word and deed a sane gospel. I yearn for our congregation to be a place where all come because they know the elephant's foot has been lifted. And the love of Jesus Christ is set forth and embraces those who have been crushed for so long. Jesus Christ is just. He's the just Messiah of Palm Sunday. The end of injustice is the beginning of freedom. A colleague of Nico Smith writes, people used to say he wouldn't act the way he preached, but they were wrong. He moved to Mamelodi. Well, as you get serious about justice, obedience to this Jesus becomes more painful. Jesus' voice becomes more piercing, and the demand for change becomes relentless. To love God and others is no easy thing, for justice is at the base of the gospel. We live in a culture, however, that is gospel ignorant, same on, shame on the church. And gospel resistant. Will you obey Jesus Christ and get on with remembering, telling, and living the way of Jesus? The way of justice. Amen.